All right, hello. Uh, we're so happy to be here uh, in person. Uh, my name is Veronica Lopez. And my name is Adolfo Garcia. And we're part of the big release engineering uh, family for Kubernetes team. And we're presenting uh, today a little bit of the work that we have been doing for the past few years, but that obviously wouldn't be possible with the whole team. Um, and yeah, also Navarun will be joining us from India. It's at the last moment he couldn't come. So I hope that you enjoy um, this weird hybrid format. <laughs> and let us know if you have any questions. All right, so first up, we're going to play back uh, Navarun's message. Uh, he's part of though too. So we're really excited to see, uh, to just let you know the advances we've been uh, implementing into the release and the, the Kubernetes release process. And uh, we'll start with some uh, past history about what we've been working in the past. Well, I am Navarun. I work at VMware as a software engineer focusing on the Kubernetes upstream project. I am a release manager associate in Kubernetes SIG release and currently serve as the branch management shadow for Kubernetes 1.2.3. Previously, I have been the Kubernetes uh, 1.21 release team lead uh, and have been in the Kubernetes releases since Kubernetes 1.17. In addition to my release duties, I contribute to areas like uh, SIG architecture, API machinery, and contributor experience, and also serve in the Kubernetes Code of Conduct Committee. What I'll do right now is I'll start by giving you a brief history of the evolution of tooling which powers Kubernetes releases cycle after cycle. So until February last year, a lot of the tasks done in a release were performed using a tool called Anago and some other helpers written in Bash. It was amazing to see all of the heavy lifting done by code in Bash. But there are problems as well. Although the tooling worked really good, really great, there were some downsides. A particularly big one was testing. It is comparably harder to test code written in Bash. Using this set of tools also involved some really nasty war stories while cutting releases. So what did the release engineering project do? Sasha, along with other members of SIG release, ventured into rewriting all of the tooling in Go. Now, this is a humongous job but all of that was not taken at once. The team took a really pragmatic approach into moving one component at a time into the new way of doing things. And as such, there was an iterative development process. For example, in this uh, tracking issue, you can see what all uh, micro tasks were done and what steps were taken in order to port the code into Go. Uh, you can, when you get the slides, you can go to the link and check all the work that was done and uh, see what kind of challenges the team faced. And by November 2020, the efforts finally converged into the removal of Anago as the release tooling. Here you can see uh, Sasha committing um, all changes. Uh, the final, the final ones, which removes uh, references of Enago from all scripts and documentation in the release process. Now, what exactly were the benefits of CREL? Let me go through them. Number one, it's the ability to run tasks in parallel. We can run uh, seamlessly all of these uh, complex things in parallel, saving us time. We can also submit these jobs into Google Cloud Build so that we don't have to run it on our own machine. Resiliency. And not just uh, at a few places, all across the board. The tooling now can handle situations like uh, network errors. Uh, it handles them with uh, appropriate amount of retries. If things fail, we can start from the same place. Security. That aspect is also enhanced a lot. We can now reliably filter secrets from outputs. We can also key, also use key management services uh, 
if we want to store some secrets out there and then retrieve them in the pipeline and at the same time ensure that the, log the logic works well. Since all of this tooling is written in Go, we also get like faster execution times. Remember one of the problems I told earlier, a particularly big one was we can't reliably test our code when it was written in Bash. When the code was ported to Go, all functionalities were mobbed and can be reliably tested using uh, mobbed uh, helpers. And last but not the least, the most important benefit is that CREL sets up a foundation for new features and improvements to existing features. In later parts of this talk, you will see what kind of things we are doing in terms of like improving transparency in our release processes and all of that can get built into CREL without much issues. It's very much customizable. It is now far easier to add new functionality and improve existing functionalities in the uh, required in the release process. Now look at how things are in real life. It got so much easier to perform uh, tasks like fast forwarding release branches. Uh, now I would like to pass on the baton to Veronica and Adolfo who will take you along the journey of what we did in the last year recently, what is on our plate now, and what is our vision for the future. All right. <laughs> so again, for those who were late, I'm Veronica Lopez, and I'm a release manager, uh, recently promoted from associate. And uh, well, I have been, uh, part of the release family for a while. Like um, We have internal jokes about it, and I have been serving in different roles for like around seven uh, releases already. Uh, and the change has been real. Like uh, change has happened um, before my eyes, like in real time. Uh, I remember uh, as part of other roles or other sub teams and, and the release team, uh, how sometimes the wrangling and fighting the tooling was more time consuming and labor intensive than the actual tasks that we were trying to achieve. But you know, like that is systems programming and that is Kubernetes programming. So yeah, so with um, part, part of the things that we're presenting today and that Navarone already mentioned are like the evolution of, of, of how we, we, we are here now. That is the part that I'm going to talk about and how has the past work and the present work uh, set us for success, hopefully, <laughs> for the future and all the efforts that that, that will involve. Uh, okay, so we, we have to go a little bit back to um, the, oh, yeah, sorry, I cannot see, okay. Uh, back uh, in the day with all, all of this description that I told you of the tooling that we had, even though we had uh, amazing teammates and, and who knew their, their job, like the palm of their hands, um, sometimes these processes didn't, um, didn't inspire a lot of confidence to like people outside. So little by little, uh, we have been able to provide tools that have provided uh, the community with more certainty and guarantees of, about the products that we release. You know? um, some examples of this are artifact verification, the container image digest checks, uh, binary tagging, binary platform checks, and like we could give a talk about every single part of, 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 of this. But um, if, you're, if you have any questions, uh, happy to talk about it uh, outside. Uh, another uh, very important aspect of, of the evolution of our tooling is that uh, we are now owners of the container image promoter. Uh, this is just like an example of how we have been um, adopting or, or inheriting certain parts of the release process that in the past we needed uh, people, for example, for in, in this specific case from Google, to like when we were done uh, with a process, like we needed uh, someone from Google to uh, to do the next step, you know, and that was, um, I mean, even as 
we we love them. <laughs> Sometimes they were super busy and like uh, just we have people in Europe, we have people in India, we have people in America, in the American continent, um, and just um, it, it was madness. Yeah. <laughs> so being able to now own this process and others as well uh, has given us more um, freedom to just move forward. Yeah. And so one of the uh, main uh, things, personally speaking, uh, of, of wins of, of our team, and Stephen is here, so he won't let me lie, was stripping uh, basil from, from all of this tooling. <laughs> we love basil, we love Kubernetes, but probably not together. <laughs> Yeah, anyway, um, and yeah, no, but that, that like laughs and jokes aside, like it was a huge, huge, huge effort uh, because I mean, we complain a lot about this uh, synergy of Bazel and Kubernetes, but truth is that it was the best tool at some point, you know, because um, we couldn't find anything else and you, you people were not going to, re to reinvent the wheel, you know? So um, being able to finally uh, achieve a phase where we could uh, get rid of it at different points in, on the release, uh, it was amazing and a huge technical effort. And um, well, yeah, we have uh, other other uh, elements um, that you can see here, but that I wouldn't like to um, repeat or, or that Adolfo will mention in more detail. But yeah, uh, so all all of this amazing work from all the team and like we explicitly are not mentioning names uh, except for like a few because we are very aware that we will be missing like people. <laughs> so it's th this is a love letter to the release team because like it definitely wouldn't, all, all these huge efforts wouldn't exist without the coordination of a lot of people. So uh, with this in mind, uh, and the more exciting process uh, of, of all of this story, I will uh, give uh, Adolfo a chance to tell you in a little bit more detail on what uh, the efforts he has been leading, again, with all the release engineering uh, family, but it's exciting. Yeah. Uh, thanks, Veronica. Yeah, my name is uh, Adolfo Garcia. I am a technical lead with Kubernetes release uh, for the release engineering sub project. Um, and yeah, if you saw the history and evol evolution of the tooling that powers the Kubernetes releases, it basically are it constitutes uh, steps to be where we want to be right now. So. This, this, like, this is like the beginning of a platform where we now have in place the necessary improvements and enhancements to our tooling, where we now can start working on improvements that not only constitute the releasing of artifacts, but to actually build on top of them. And uh, if you recognize some of the items listed on, the, on your screen, um, these are part of an overarching effort to basically secure the software supply chain where Kubernetes is involved. Now, Kubernetes, as most of other open source projects, is not the complete software supply chain by itself. It consumes and gets consumed in uh, either up and downstream of the, of the artifacts we released. Um, so uh, I want to break, it, break this, this effort in three. Uh, just to give you a quick update on what we are working on right now. So the first, the, our first aim is to uh, sign whatever of our artifacts we can. The most artifacts and uh, uh, the actual, uh, every file and container image that gets consumed by someone downstream, we want to sign that. We want to uh, give the community the guarantees of um, authentication and uh, and non-repudiation uh, of the artifacts that we were producing. And um, this involves um, several changes that we need to put in place. But now, as Veronica was saying, now that we have like a, a stripped and re, 
re, uh, re-own the container image promoter and it's uh, now in a ready state too, so that we can start iterating over it. This project, by the way, is not one that originated with Integrilis. Uh, so it, it originated, uh, I think it was in Kate's Infra? Uh, yeah. yeah, and then uh, now that Kate's Infra evolved into a proper, from my work group to a SIG, uh, we ended up having the, the owning the project. And uh, this will allow us to implement the, the signing code and necessary features to have, have a signed container images at some point. And, um, uh, the other one we've been working about is the Kubernetes bill of materials. That effort is mainly done. I mean, it's, it's still, of course, like every evolving software project, it's still open to suggestions, comments, whatever. Uh, but you can already, you can already um, use the, um, the, and consume the Kubernetes uh, bill of materials, which uh, goes out with every release. Uh, then uh, uh, if you, okay, so, um, let me see, if I can see the comment as well. All right. And uh, yeah, so we produce two bill of materials with each release, one describing the artifacts and the other one describing the source code. And uh, these are the URLs for the Kubernetes 122 uh, S-bombs, uh, which was the first release that actually shaped with a bill of materials describing its, its artifacts. And if you're interested in, in, the, um, in the code that powers all this and maybe interested in using it for your own projects, we're gonna be having a, a deeper dive session on Friday where you can uh, hear more about the history of this project and the, the th tools available for you to, to use. Then, the final one is uh, we are trying to push towards Salsa compliance in our, uh, in our part. So, um, as I said before, Kubernetes is not the whole supply chain uh, software software supply chain, but certainly the most important artifacts happen in the links that fall under our responsibility. So we are trying to push and secure them as soon as we can uh, so that we can provide guarantees to the community. Uh, so Salsa, just a, we're not going to deep dive into the, the, what, what it does. It's a framework uh, to ensure some practices and and, um, and requirements about information and, and human aspects of your uh, software releases. And uh, we're trying to get to the first level of Salsa, which is basically providing uh, documentation and information about what goes on inside of the, of the uh, release chain, of the release process. Uh, we, most of the practices to achieve Salsa were inherited since the early days from the bash script that we showcased earlier. So uh, uh, this is not a new thing. Uh, simply the, some of the security features that Salsa requires uh, came already, were already signed from the beginning, I think. Uh, so we are just trying to match up and have like a benchmark to see uh, where, how are we, how we are going to, to to, uh, to match with the Salsa's level one requirements. Of course, we would like to push forward to further levels, uh, but we'll see that it requires a little bit more um, work to achieve there. So we currently have an open tracking issue uh, where we are gathering ideas. We are planning, of course, uh, on opening details of the implementation to uh, in CAPS so that the whole community can weigh in. Uh, but what I would like to, to assure you is that we, uh, based on the whole majority of things that we already had in place and work that has been going on in the last month or so, we are already, we are already have goal to reach Salsa Level 1 and uh, as a prototype, um, and we are going to be testing this in the coming releases, um, which is uh, just providing the basic attestation files uh, of provenance of the artifact. So provenance in the salsa speak means uh, that you should be able to take one of the artifacts and trace it all the way back to the uh, release process to find exactly where it was uh, produced. So we already have that code in place, which was the, the, the big um, missing piece to achieve salsa com uh, compliance as a level one. And uh, we are going to be uh, filing Cap uh, uh, to see if we can push it all the way uh, towards the higher salsa levels. Um, 
Now, the thing about reaching higher salsa levels is that it requires uh, more changes than to reach salsa level one. Um, the first, uh, the most important thing is that we have to, we will have to, in, if we were salsa level four, uh, some people claim that it's unachievable on, on, for some organizations. Could be, I don't know if, if it's possible for the Kubernetes community to, to, to achieve um, uh, salsa level four. Certainly we can, and we should try to uh, achieve at least two or three, uh, which uh, means that all of the information that travels through the release process from the beginning to end has to be signed, properly authenticated, and so on. Um, there are lots of aspects of this. Uh, I think the most challenging right now is the human part of the problem uh, because we, we have to modify. If we were to achieve higher levels of salsa compliance for our releases, we would have to uh, actually go and uh, modify some of the practices with the way contributors uh, authorize changes to the code, the, the, the code reviews and things like that. So, I think uh, the main message here is that we need to have the conversation. We need to have some discussions about how are we going to handle uh, the Kubernetes release process within a world that is constantly demanding more and more security around the software supply chain. Um, we we try. Uh, we're going to be opening the caps, and uh, most of the there are alternatives for all of the implementations from uh, the attestation files to the signing of the artifacts to the way we store them inside of, of the container registries. So we want to hear from everyone. We want to hear from everyone and we want to collectively reach and find the best solutions for each of these problems. And um, Salsa is simply, a, let's say, a, like a bunch of checkboxes that we that guide us to see if we are complying with some of the, the things that are expected from us. So um, uh, I, if you are going to have a takeaway from this talk is we need involvement, we need opinions, and we need uh, more eyes on the code and the things that, that we're doing because uh, while we are responsible for cutting the releases and the things that you and your customers consume, it's the people, it's the community that drives everything behind it. And uh, we don't want to uh, appear like we're pushing into one direction without talking to everyone. Uh, so please come and weigh in on the issues, on the caps, and uh, let us know if you have any of the, uh, any suggestions. And we're, of course, happy to, to, to hear from you. So, um, um, what I want to say about that, sorry, <laughs> is that um, it has been very interesting <clears throat> for me to see that all of this, like formalities of salsa and the compliance and the provenance and the security, obviously inspired uh, by by the recent attacks in the industry and uh, like not not necessarily on the Kubernetes side, you know, but like in systems in general. Um, it has been really interesting for me to see that this evolution was very organic. Like, uh, as, as I said, like from my very specific point of view of like serving at the release team, like in different um, small roles, in, but that did like different parts of the puzzle. Um, and the, 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 this achievement, the collection of this work and achievements has been like, tooling that we have needed for, for our own work, to do our own job in a faster and more efficient way. So like uh, when we achieved the bill of materials and now are heading towards this, it really feels like a natural next step. Like we have been building like block after block after block. And yeah, so in, in obviously uh, what Adolfo says is very important, like uh, involving all the community, but, and, and that is important, but also we won't be able to move forward, like especially for Salsa three or four, and or four if it's achievable and we'll see, but even considering if it's achievable, like uh, th those processes cannot happen, like, and let's say if I'm building or cutting a release, like in my computer and that's it, you know, like, we would need like um, uh, 
processes in place, but like timed and you know, scripted and uh, automated and verified and everything like that. Um, and that is definitely not possible without strict coordination <laughs> from, from the community, you know? And a lot of resources, of course. And uh, I guess uh, just one final, uh, final remark for me is that things in the software supply security chain, uh, the security uh, side of the of software supply chains is evolving very rapidly. And uh, if you have experience, if you have, um, if you want to help the project in this rapidly evolving space, please come join us. We we really need your help. So we are. We try to keep things as current as we can, but we are a, small, a very small team of volunteers working on this, so please come and join. And uh, from either just making your voice heard or actually submitting PRs uh, to help our release process, you are welcome. You are encouraged to join. You are absolutely, uh, we absolutely need you. Um, and yeah, so if you, uh, I think we could open for some questions if there are any. And, um, and thanks again for coming and listen to our, to our experiences. Yeah, we added a bunch of references in case you want to see our slides uh, with all the work that it's like a lot and super interesting, both the code and the documentation. So please feel free um, to, to look around and, and share your opinions with us. Um, so that's it. <laughs> that's the talk. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>Uh, we talked about this a little bit yesterday in person, and this is probably more a question for CNCF as a whole than just for SIG release. And that is, uh, all of the work that you've done for SBOM for Kubernetes, how can that be used by other CNCF projects? Right, so uh, this has been a common request uh, <laughs> from, for, from some, some other projects. Uh, we try to distill like general use utilities of everything we, we do. So if you want to run your own bill of materials for your project, in this case we test, you can download our tool and, and run it. And we have one issue right now published where um, uh, the community, especially, specifically the Knative folks, approached us and asked us to to produce our utilities in a more uh, ready to run state. So you can right now down, download the code and compile it and have the, the utilities, but we are also planning on releasing the utilities as part of pieces that you can plug together into your CSVD pipeline to generate all of these things. Right now, you can down, uh, download the release notes uh, application, you can reuse uh, some of the code that we used to launch the builds inside of Google Cloud Build and the Bill of Materials tool as well. And some of the, some of the provenance attestations, attestation files that we are currently producing to reach Salsa 1 uh, are going to be built into the Bill of Materials uh, tool soon so that you, whenever you run the, the Bill of Materials for your project, you, you can actually output a separate file, the, the predicate needed to have uh, the, the, the provenance data for your project and to make you uh, closer to reaching Salsa 1. And yeah, so uh, yesterday we were discussing about if there was a way that other projects could come and, and reach out to us to have some either help or pointers of our software to run the releases. Absolutely, we're open, everything is open source. Everything tries to be as Kubernetes agnostic as possible. We even have now a new repository where we're trying to 
make sure that everything that lives in that repository is, has zero Kubernetes-specific content. So when, uh, if you go to Kubernetes release engineering, it's still Kubernetes-specific, but we have another repository um, where I'll share the links later in, in the presentation, where everything there is ready to run for any project. So. Yeah, uh, as a, an example, a quick example of this, like without going like super deep into the process, someone uh, recently told us that they the the tool as it is right now has been very uh, useful for some teams just to get the list of container images and in, in, in a release, you know, and then to use them for their own purposes and their own companies, you know. But like it's already like not being useful for people. Uh, without the full, the fully fledged uh, features, you know. Um, so definitely, like we love knowing cases like those uh, to see where people would be more interested to to port port it to their own for their own benefit without um, needing to have it as a complete project. For example, <laughs> any other questions? I think we don't have time now. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, if you have <coughs> questions, apps, whatever, uh, please uh, contact us. So that, that's our handles, and <laughs> and uh, and come join the release engineering meetings every Tuesday, every other Tuesday, and we happy to have you there. Yeah, now more than ever, we need people from different backgrounds and the engineering side, like uh, not only people from release engineering backgrounds, but security would be greatly helpful. So uh, yeah, join us. Thanks. <laughs>